There's a couple little things I have to do before we head up into the mountains. And that would be to top off my oil, buy myself some lunch. Nothing fancy. Just got myself a, uh, a cold sandwich and a granola bar. Put that in my cooler. That taken care of, let's head up to the mountains. Are we just smaller versions of a bigger home? Are you the rivers in your veins? Am I the flakes that become snow? bridge we're going to be crossing over here shortly pay attention to it because I think they have like a five-year plan to replace it so it's one to remember and I, I want to pay attention to it because I, I want to know if it's worth photographing leave it in the comments below if you think this bridge is worth photographing it's gonna to be torn down so it might be good to have like that context the historical memory of it using photography but I just don't know if it's worth photographing and I want to know what you think all right, there it is. There's the historic bridge right up ahead. You can see how narrow this whole area is and how difficult it would be to like find a nice spot to photograph it. I'm gonna have to literally pull over on the shoulder. There'd be one composition that I could probably get to safely. And the thing is, this bridge has probably been photographed hundreds of times already by other people throughout the years, so it's just really debatable. Are the lines between us just a path to a vacant past? And you still make me think of what we used to be. Maybe we're smaller Are we just small? Welcome to Lake Cascade. Not really part of the plan, but you gotta roll with the punches, I guess. Never been here. I mean, I've, I've been on Lake Cascade. I've never been to this specific state park. It's a little beach, lots of bugs flying around. Footpath. supposed to be up there. Allow me to explain. Initially, when planning this photo outing, I had intended to drive to the Blue Lake Trail about two hours north of where I live. But upon reaching the turnoff, I was met with a tragic sight. The road was closed due to fresh wildfires making it impassable. At first, my disappointment almost ruined my enthusiasm for the trip altogether. But I'd already driven over an hour and a half, so I'd better just travel a bit further and see what there was to explore. So while this is not my initial plan, and I definitely lost my initial gusto, the top the topic of this video is far too important to put off, and the images I'll be sharing, especially the final collection, are ones I'm very happy with. So here we go. The quote-unquote Italian sandwich on a pretzel bun. Looks like salami, pepperoni, provolone, and ham with some bals balsamic vinaigrette dressing. We'll do a little drizzle. There we go. Nice picnic lunch. Well, that lunch was uh, underwhelming. No, no surprise there, it was a cheap sandwich. Just like a deli sandwich. Um, uh, to go along with it, cheap can of coffee. Well, the topic of discussion today, can you, can you get away with just one prime lens? 
not even a zoom lens, just a prime lens. Now, if you remember, not too long ago, last week in fact, posted a video uh, about getting started in street photography. And as I was talking about this, you know, one of the key tips that I had was to shoot with one focal length, get really good with one focal length. It got me thinking like, could that, could that actually apply to other things too? Not, not just a, not just street photography, but what about landscape photography? You know, I hear about uh, wildlife photographers who shoot with one prime lens, you know, like a 600 prime or something like that. Uh, and they do a lot of it with just that one focal length because their goal is to get real close to a subject. So I only have one lens with me. I only have one lens on my camera. Actually, I think I have a subject. Look how perfect this little tree is. It's just a little, little globe willow sitting there on its own, right on the sandy shore, wind blowing it. Your primary challenge when using a prime lens, primary, <laughs> is you really have to understand where that focal length shines. Examine your subject kind of with that that in mind. So for instance, if I'm shooting with like a normal focal length, my eyes are a good gauge because it's very close. Normal focal lengths are very close to what the eye sees. Whereas if I'm shooting with like a wide angle, like a 24, then I really want to make sure I, I get closer. Unless I want to get this feeling of isolation so you start thinking about story you start thinking about composition in a different way instead of like oh here's a cool subject I'm just gonna plop down wherever I saw it first and try to take a picture you're starting to think about other things you know how can I make this subject work in the situation that it's in in the scene that it's in I want to make it feel isolated in the middle of nowhere I stand farther back and by standing farther back, it, it, the emptiness of the beach becomes even more important. Do I want the branches to be peeking over the horizon so that you know they're, they're interfering with the sky, or do I want them to be under the hillside behind it? These are all questions you start asking yourself because you don't have to worry about what focal length to shoot with. You've you got one choice as it is. So as far as a teaching tool goes, nothing, nothing beats for composition and, and stuff like that, a single focal length. But can you still make compelling photos with it? That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for today. Yeah, I mean, talk about getting good at minimalism in your photography. If I stand at the right angle and get low, I have this huge expanse of beach that I can use as a minimal foreground and then the hills in the background it might get blurred out or just get absorbed into the scenery. What I do have to decide is with this wind, how blurry do I want the branches to be? Hmm. Super bright out here too. Let's spin my hat around. It's a little better. Okay, not necessarily what I would choose for uh, landscape photography. Not my normal camera for landscape photography. But uh, we're talking one fixed focal length. What better way to do it than with a Fuji X100 series? F8, 1 500 to try to freeze the, the movement because there's a lot of uh, wind and I think it looks nice and minimal. Center stage on that, on that shrubbery. Got a riddle for you. What do you get when you mix sand, wind, and cameras? 
Yeah. Did you guess it? Pretty sure there's a pair of turkey vultures on the beach there, up ahead. That'd be really cool to try to get a picture of them, even with a 35 millimeter lens. This is definitely not the best time of day to be out with a camera. The sun is almost perfectly straight up in the sky. So what I'm looking for right now is a pattern in the sand. What I'm looking for is a clean section. Maybe just a little bit of a uh, seaweed stuff or pond grass, I guess, because this is not the sea, it's, it's a lake. So pond grass is what I'll call it, uh, and lines of gravel, or pebbles. Pebbles, yeah, let's call them pebbles. It's a very dirty beach, if I'm honest which does tend to uh, distract. But it's about the closest thing I can get to a beach around here, so we'll make do. It's a greater challenge to have to shoot with just a prime lens, but I'll just reiterate how much of an educational tool I think it is. Forcing yourself to compose using one lens really helps you get to know the characteristics of that focal length so that if in the future you do buy more lenses, you know, with different zoom ranges or multiple prime lenses, you can look at a subject or look at a scene and go, I need my 50 mil for this, or I need my 35. Because you've spent the time getting to know the characteristic and, and what it does to shape the scene and the background. And I don't know, I just think that's something that I've personally lost sight of, maybe you have too, when you have access to so many different lenses of different focal lengths. It's easy to just, well, I'll just zoom in a little bit, or I'll just, Grab the 24 to 70, I'll use the 100 to 400. I do it all the time. And, you know, I, I think I've taken a step back. Now, does this mean that you're gonna miss some photo opportunities? Yeah, of course it does. Obviously it does. Uh, but, that's the sacrifice. You're, you're kind of making a, a sacrifice in order to train your eye to be better at what you're doing so that when you do have access to those other focal lengths and you can get those shots, uh, they're gonna be better. As always, comments down below what you thought about the video, if you have anything to add. If you liked any of the photos, let me know. I appreciate you joining me and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.